another week, another candle. This is the weekly market forecast. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the stock market, especially the craziness that's been happening with the stock market and GameStop. I'm going to give you my opinion about it. A lot of people have been asking me about it, so I'll, do, I'll drop on that. And also, we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies. If you had been following me the last two weeks, I made the call about altcoins and that Bitcoin was going to slow down and altcoins was going to pump. XRP is leading the pump for today. We're going to talk about all that coming up after the intro. What's up, guys? This is JC and welcome to the Wealth Engineering channel. The more you pay attention to, the more aware you become. And in this channel, we pay attention to stocks and crypto to find the best place to grow your portfolio. If this is something that interests you, I want you to smash the like button, subscribe and click the bell. The first Sunday of every month, we look at the market and we do a monthly forecast. And every Sunday after that, we follow up on this prediction to see if we're on or off target. We had a lot of action in the stock market. The volatility index is rising. We also have actions in the crypto market, especially the altcoins. Dogecoins is pumping and dumping. We also have XRP pumping now. You came here for the truth. Let's just dive deep into it. All right, guys, as usual, we're going to start with the S&P 500. So I'm going to try to make this technical analysis quick for today because I really want to jump into the GameStop situation. So uh, let's get to it. So for the S&P 500, we're looking at the weekly candle and we had a very bearish candle. Now, I want you to pay attention to this candle because this is a sign of what is to come. One thing to keep in mind with technical analysis is when you have a pattern happening on a higher time frame, it gives them a lot more weight. And now we have a very bearish candle, which is this candle right here. We also have a pattern and it's called a bearish engulfing candle. This one right here, it's when the red candle is engulfing the entire candle previous to it. And that candle was green. This candle is red. So this is a bearish engulfing candle. This candle right here and this pattern right here is a reversal candle that symbolizes there is a downtrend coming. Now, in terms of probability, it's not necessarily that much accurate. But when it happens on a high time frame, it can be very accurate, especially when you look at it here. This is the last time it happened. You can see this candle right here is a lot bigger than the candle previous to it. And if you can, you can take this entire candle and replace it here and you still have a little bit left. This is how much this candle is compared to this one. And you see what happened after the next week after that, the market dropped. So that was a significant drop. That was about 12% on the market, the S&P 500 as a whole. And remember, this, the S&P 500 is kind of like an average of the entire market. So there, that means there are some companies that could drop even lower than this. And now we have the same pattern happening again. So where it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen next week. And if we see that we have the price dropping and touching the EMA 21, that's going to be, it could rebound, but if it closes below the EMA 21 next week, then this is really bearish. And I think there is some serious correction happening, especially with what's been happening with GameStop right now. That might bring the entire financial market down because there is a lot at play here. But uh, this is it. When it comes to the other indicators, they're also supporting this. Last week, we were talking about this. I drew this to, to let, I also drew this for you. Remember, we draw the bearish divergence. And if we had rejected this strong point, then we're heading towards another lower low. And right now, it seems that we have a clear rejection. You can see it clearly if I put it like this. This is the bearish divergence. This is a three years bearish divergence. And also we had rejected again. It takes a long time to rally up to this pattern. And once we reject it, then it's not a good sign on the long term. You can see the MACD is also about to cross and that's a bearish cross. The ADX is also about to put down and the gap is closing. So it's the S&P 500 for the next couple of days, even weeks, could be bearish. So I want to talk about this chart very quickly. Um, it seems that we're building some sort of support on this line right here. Uh, the, if this, if we stay long enough on this support, we might have a pump back up 
and challenge during the other 68%. Now, if the market is also starting to go down, sometimes Bitcoins follow it and we cover it very quickly. So it's going to be very interesting to see the next couple of days what happens. Are we going to build more support on this line and build in strength to pump back up? Or are we going to break the support and go challenge the next support? If we're looking at the RSI, the RSI is already on the low, all right? The MACD is slowly about to cross. Now you can see it was diving deep. Now it's going sideways. When it goes sideways like this, you can also cross back up. And this, if this happens, then you can cross back up and start pumping the price again. So uh, we should start looking forward to see when is the next time Bitcoin is going to pump. But it's not going to be that quick. Uh, it's not going to be happening right away. It, we still have some time on the altcoins. So I would recommend definitely stay invested in the altcoin, but get ready because uh, the, when the altcoins are pumping, Bitcoin is staying stable, but we're soon approaching the time when it's going to be uh, that time where we're allocating the altcoins back to Bitcoin because Bitcoin is slowly getting ready and accumulating strength to start pumping back up. So this is what I see in a nutshell. All right. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. But that's two weeks now that was developing some some support around this line right here. And it's looking like this week we're also starting that same pattern and we'll see how that goes. And lastly, I want to talk about XRP. Now, XRP has taken a beating last month in December. Now we're closing January and XRP is doing very well. It's pumping. It's been it's been staying below the EMA 21 for a couple of weeks. And now look at this. We're closing the week with this nice, beautiful candle. And we even starting this week also with this candle right here that looks very bullish. We might even challenge 60 past 60 cents on XRP this week. So that's going to be very interesting. Now, what important, what is very important to see is if we end up closing this candle right above this line, then we might go um we might go for for 80 xrp again but this is very interesting i don't know what's pushing it um usually in davos people meet up every year around the end of january where they discuss about world economic forums and i think xrp is very heavily discussed this year they were they're going to talk about a lot about regulation for the cryptocurrencies and uh, xrp actually it might be um, very in line to be regulated and be the crypto of choice of the central banks of the banking system so um that could be a reason why it's pumping um let's see you can see last year in january we also had a rally lasted january all the way to the end of january beginning of february so we could have a similar pattern that way so maybe that's the same thing happening we don't know but it's very interesting to see this if you have been buying xrp while it was low around 20 cents especially after that dip always buy the dip make sure you buy the dip it's always saying uh, then you wait to definitely on on 200 percent return on your investment as of now and you might get it higher so if that's you then enjoying the ride and let me know in the comment section because we've been discussing about all that um no don't people weren't saying that when when this dip happens Everyone was saying, hey, XRP is dumb, XRP is over, and look at it, we're recovering very quick. And crypto is now openly discussed in forums like Forbes, like they're talking about Dogecoin. Dogecoin is one of the worst coins I've ever seen. It's a meme coin. It's not supposed to be me. It's not supposed to be a mean of actual investment. But hey, people are pumping and dumping Dogecoin. That's cool. But hey, now, a couple months, couple hours ago it was dumping and it's pumping again but xrp is pumping xrp is definitely something that you can invest in because there's actual value that is behind it all right so i'm not going to encourage people to buy dogecoin but i'm definitely going to encourage people to look at the relationship between bitcoin and the altcoins and position themselves to benefit from both of them so this week last week and the week before that, we were talking about positioning yourself for altcoin. Now it's starting to be the time where we should look into taking some profit and positioning yourself back into Bitcoin. But it's not. I'm not going to sound the alarm yet. 
we're going to wait, wait until next week to see where that goes. And lastly, we're going to talk about GameStop. Now, personally, uh, I'm not invested in GameStop. I do not have any shares. Um, it's the same for AMC. They do not fit my investing patterns. And me, I do not invest with emotion. I, may, I invest with logic. And with that said, uh, from a logic and investment perspective, GameStop is not a stock that I would buy. Now, with that said, um, I love what's going on. This is unprecedented. This is like one of, like one, someone I know always says this, what a time to be alive. This is amazing. And what's currently happening right now, uh, there will be a movie made out of this for sure. And this is going to change finance forever. But what I love about this, it's also exposing the corruption in Wall Street and the big financial institution. And also it emphasized the need of cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance. Now, something I've been alluding to in my channel is part of your Alcon strategy, look into decentralized finance. Uh, and events like this are going to be used as a selling point to promote decentralized finance. So it's the next buzzword, especially on that bull run. And events like this are like a selling point for DeFi. So make sure you check your decentralized finance cryptocurrencies or altcoin, and that could be part of your strategy. Also, um, I'm really disappointed that Robinhood, out of all people, are actually shutting down and limiting people from buying shares that they feel is a great investment. Now, when it comes to the strategy, the strategy itself is actually pretty smart because it's a short squeeze. And when people are shorting more shares that is actually available in the market, then it's a great way to make money. It's a great strategy. It's not fair to them that Robinhood are limiting them from buying shares. When Wall Street is doing that, no one is stopping Wall Street. But when the little guy is doing that, then it's a problem. And it's the same thing for AMC. It's the same thing. And what's worse is companies like Melvin, they're forcing the short on GameStop so that they can push GameStop to bankruptcy. And then what they're going to do is they're going to go buy the GameStop when it's going bankrupt, restructure it, and then push the stock back up so that they can money, they can make money on the way up as well. This is a vicious cycle that Wall Street is doing to make money and destroying jobs, destroying like destroying people's savings and making a lot of money in the process and to for the Wall Street bets, people are all creeds and colors and age all ganged up together focusing on one single goal to make this happen. It's unprecedented and I I have a lot of respect for that. I have a lot of respect for that. And I'm encouraging them. Honestly, I'm cheering for them. We're all little guys here. We're not big. We're all trying to make money. But more importantly, I'm always advocating um, true wealth. And the true wealth is your time and your freedom. And what Robin Hood is doing is uh, an attack on your personal freedom. And this does not sit well with me. So I'm actually going to consider this week, how can I join this fight? And thinking of ways to actually join the fight because um, when it's when it's an attack on freedom, it does, at this point it's no it's not emotion anymore, it's not logic anymore. We have to throw all this out of the way and we have to fight for freedom. And the true well that we all have is our time and our freedom. So um, I'm not going to put a lot of money in it because honestly, I don't like to waste money. And now I also have a financial educational school. You know, I can't encourage people to make bets like that when want, on the investment perspective, it doesn't make any sense to invest in something that you know is not worth it. But when it comes to fighting for your freedom, this is where I stand with um, the Wall Street bets. And also, um, I, and I love AMC, so I would actually invest in that so that at least I can help them stay afloat because it's a rough time out there with, um, with the COVID situation, uh, with the pandemic situation. No one is going out. I love watching movies. I watch popcorn and buy slush at movies every time I go there. The best time, one of, a lot of best time of my life has happened in movie theaters. So 
I think uh, from a fighting perspective, uh, the AMC fight, I might join it as well. And I am, I'm considering buying six shares only because Robin Hood has limit people to only buy five shares. So I want to buy six shares as a, as a way to, to show them, hey, you know, I, I want to fight for my freedom. I want to maintain my freedom and I want to join the fight collectively. Actually, quick update I want to make. And as I was editing this video, I realized that they made many updates to the limit uh, to the amount of shares you can buy. So check this out. So Robin Hood, I'm going to leave this link on the, I'm going to leave this in the description. So make sure you check this out. It says here that Robin Hood reveals strict new volatile stock rules limits on GME AMC fractional shares update. And it's saying that uh, basically uh, they're going to have a limit on how many shares you can have. So at first they're saying that, hey, on AMC you can have uh, 115 shares and on GME, which is GameStop, you can have five shares, all right? So that is the limit they're saying. But they keep updating this. Now it's saying AMC is 25 shares and GME is two shares. Update, Robinhood has changed its limit most notably reducing the amount of GameStop shares individuals can hold. That's being dropped to two shares as per the update table. This is crazy and this is a screenshot at 12.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and it's keep, it's keep getting worse. Here's an update number two, AMC stand shares, GameStop is one shares. This is... 2 p.m. and just before market close all right because it was getting worse and worse throughout the day before market close on fridays at 3 40 p.m this is where the list stand out all right the list says hey amc is one share and gme is one share option contract 10 then the option contract here is five so what i'm gonna try to do is i'm gonna try to have more than 10 option contracts on AMC and I'm going to, oh, I'm not going to touch GameStop because uh, <laughs> this is a different fight. But AMC, I want to I wanna join that fight. I want to join that battle right here. So tomorrow, I'm going to try to place an order on interactive brokers to see if I can have, um, I'm definitely going to try to buy two shares of AMC and then I'm going to place on options for 11 contracts of amc and this is a way this is uh this is not really an investment i repeat again this is not an investment i am not a financial advisor this is not financial advice you should do your own research but i'm doing this to f join the fight because they're attacking people's freedom this is unfair this is not right robin hood out of all places should not be ironic because this is ironic what's happening. Robin Hood is supposed to be for the people, not against the people. And this is this action right here is not right. It's against the people. And this is why we need cryptocurrencies. We need decentralized finance. And we need entrepreneurs to go and create these platforms. Um, we need a lot of it. And we need to invest in entrepreneurs that way. We need to invest in entrepreneurs that are willing to use their skills and their time to develop platforms like this. And that's one of the reasons why I joined the crypto fight. But I do not like this. I wanted to share this with you. And tomorrow, I'll give you an update on what's going on. But as of tomorrow, based on what I see here, I will buy two shares of AMC at least. And then I'll buy 11 contract of AMC. Stay tuned. We'll talk on the next video.